Hi, this is Stuart Knockbar with Educated Quest. With me today is Jennifer Gales. She is the Director of Admissions at Sarah Lawrence College in Bronxville, New York, only 35 minutes by train from the Big Apple. And Sarah Lawrence is a unique liberal arts college. It's got a blend of a very old and proven educational model, but also a very new educational model that's proven itself out as well. And I wanted to, to talk with Jennifer about a Sarah Lawrence education and about the campus and community. And so you can decide for yourselves, is this a school I'd like to visit? Is this a school I'd like to learn more about? I know I did, and that's why I'm glad Jennifer and I can talk today. Jennifer, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. Now, Sarah Lawrence has a model of tutorials and academic advising that dates back several centuries. And it's small classes, and students really know their professors well. And yet there's also an, what, what is called in in other at other schools an open curriculum. There's no required courses other than if you need a prerequisite to learn study it takes a more advanced subject so people kind of self-design their education how do new students get prepared to succeed in this model these two models together so that's a great question and really at the heart of the education um, are the relationships that students build with faculty um, and especially their their faculty mentor um, their don um, and helping them to guide their education um, and really focusing on students um, thinking about what are their interests, where their passions lie, and how do they pull those different interests together. They can be very disparate, uh, but faculty will help students to craft that program of study to meet their needs. Um, and so while they aren't uh, following a, a specific list of courses that are required for a major, there are things that students that are they're going to do it at students are going to do at Sarah Lawrence that you would see students doing at other campuses. But it's just the way in which they're engaging, you know, in their classes and the material that they're doing um, and that they're studying and they're learning about. Um, it's really about the student being in that driver's seat. Um, and finding ways to delve deeper into the material um, and exploring it through various different lenses. So instead of just learning about a topic and, and the specifics of that topic, but how does that topic relate to another? How, do, how are they intertwined? So it is an interdisciplinary um, education as well. Uh, so students in our film program aren't just learning about how to make a film, but what to make films about. Uh, one of our most uh, famous alums, um, and gosh, I'm blanking on his name right now <laughs> in the film industry. Um, that's basically what he said his experience was, and I'll have to... <laughs> um, my gosh. J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams, thank you. <laughs> um, that was what he said about his experience, you know, um, in the film program, um, and that really helped him, you know, be successful. Um, is all the other things that he learned um, in relation to how to make a, a film. Um, and so uh, students are doing that on various different levels and having not only their faculty mentor, but the faculty that they're taking classes with, that they're meeting every other week one-on-one, -on -one, who get to know them very well um, and can really help shape that education um, with you know, not only the work that they're doing on their individual conference papers and projects, um, but encouraging internships, encouraging study abroad, you know, all those kind of classic pieces of a college education um, that our students are doing um, as well. Um, and um, using those to uh, really round out um, their education. It's funny, J.J. Abrams comes up because I happen to like Star Trek. <laughs> and I've seen the the newer movies. And imagine someone comes in there, an incoming freshman, and they have their they have their curiosity about film. They have a curiosity about science, biology, physics, 
um, because there are aliens in these movies, even though they're made <laughs> up, and there's forces of physics that you have to live with. You can't just make up something new. And this person wants to you know, make science fiction. So they've mm -hmm. got to learn filmmaking. They've got to learn writing. They've got to learn science fiction. Okay. Their first, what happens when they, they walk into Sarah Lawrence, they've decided to come. How, how will the, the, the faculty, the staff guide them um, in terms of their course selection, mm -hmm. in terms of clubs and organizations they may mm -hmm. want to join, in terms of maybe alumni they may want to get to know with the idea of mm -hmm. working during a break or working during an internship? How do you, how does how do you guide them at the beginning? Because you know what you want to keep this person on campus, right? You don't want to lose them. So, um, really, again, the building those relationships is is where um, that guidance comes from. Um, the first year, students are taking a class with their faculty mentor, um, and that introduces them to what we call the conference system. Um, it introduces them to the donning system. So working with that faculty mentor, not only are they in class with them, they're meeting individually with them. The first semester, it might be every other week or every week individually that they're me meeting with that faculty don. And the purpose of those meetings is to build that relationship that is going to be sustained throughout the four years um, that will allow the Don to get the, to know the student really well. They're gonna ask certain questions, you know, to help them um, get a better understanding of the student um, and who they are. And as students interest, um, you know, develop further or change, uh, you know, they're gonna continue to ask those questions um, so that they're always on the same page um, about where a student, you know, is seeing their education going, but also being able to mentor um, and encourage and uh, students to uh, try different courses or opportunities that they might not be thinking about um, that might um, help, that will help to further uh, direct their education. We are a close-knit community, so our DOMS are working closely with our student affairs staff, with our career services staff, uh, with others across campus. Um, so it's not a place necessarily where someone's going to fall through the cracks. Um, people are going to know your name. Um, if they don't know your name, they're at least going to know your face. Um, um, you know, whether you have a class with them or, you know, whether they're a professor that you know from, uh, you know, a lecture that they've done, you know, a, a, a panel presentation or, or something or conversations you've had with other students. So, um, there's always ways for students to uh, kind of find other resources and that Don is really that place where that starts. They're the, um, the, the tour guide, so to speak, um, to kind of help students navigate uh, the campus, not only that first year, but throughout their time um, uh, at the college. Now, the, in the first year, they're taking that, that, that first year course for a year. Correct. How, they're taking how many other classes uh, each semester? They, I, I've heard like it's three courses a semester. Typically three courses a semester, um, which is a full course load. Um, so our courses are five credits a piece per semester. Um, or So if it's a year-long class and it's a 10-credit course. Um, when I first came to Sarah Lawrence, you saw more year-long courses, um, but as students, you know, have wanted to explore different areas, uh, you see more, um, more of the, the semester courses. Um, so students might take, uh, you know, if they're doing their first year, um, they might have um, two, uh, in addition to the first year studies class, they'll have two other classes that they're taking in the first semester. And then they might take two other classes in the uh, second semester, or they might be taking two year long courses and two additional semester courses. So it all depends upon, again, their interest, how the courses are being offered, um, that um, will depend upon what their schedule looks like. Um, and so it's not only about the time they're spending in the classroom and uh, engaging in conversation because they are some, for the most part, seminar style classes, but also the work they're doing outside of the classes, working on those individual papers or projects, which we call conference work and engaging in the material in a different way. 
Um, and every student's conference project is going to be different, you know, within a class. Um, one student might be writing about, uh, you know, one topic, another student's going to be writing about a, a different topic, but it somehow ties back to uh, the course material that they are learning um, typically in some way. And the type of project that they're working on um, can be very different. One student might be doing a traditional academic paper. Another student might be doing a science project. Um, it's really about, again, being in conversation with the faculty mentor and what they're looking for students to get out of the class. What, it, what are students themselves looking to get out of the classes as well? And kind of how do they meet you know, in the middle? One of the things that um, uh, also that is unique to Sarah Lawrence is that students interview their professors before they register for courses. It's a part of our registration. Even process. the ones who have just were just about to start and haven't taken a class there. Correct. Yeah. Uh, the only class that they do not interview for is the first year studies class um, because that is the course where they select a couple of courses that they're interested in and then the dean of studies office places them in in a particular course there are other two classes they will interview for and during orientation um there are um the orientation advisors will put on a, a panel for first year students to kind of explain what interview week looks like and kind of what questions should you ask and, and things like that but it's really an opportunity for conversation Students can ask questions to learn more about the course that's being taught, because of course, when you look at a course catalog, there's only so much you know, information you can put into the, the course description in that little blurb. So have an opportunity to sit down, ask you know, deeper questions, learn more about the, the course itself, but also the faculty mentor and get to know the, or the faculty member, I should say, get to know them a little better. And what, again, what are they looking for students to get out of the class? What's the kind of um, work that they're looking for students to do? What are the resources that they're going to be using for the course? So does the course really resonate with the student? Is this the kind of course that they want to take? Is this the professor that they want to work with? Um, so interviewing allows that that opportunity really for an exchange of information um, and to, to help further understand what the course is about. So we're, each semester, students, all students do this. We're living in like a digital age. So is it is it possible for a student thinking about a course to listen to a sample lecture from that professor or listen to something, watch them teaching a class or something to, to help Def them decide? I definitely think so. Um, I'm sure there are faculty who have, you know, recorded previous courses and, you know, and things like that, um, that students can kind of listen, listen in on that. One of the things we do for prospective students is um, we, and, and we've done this both in person and um uh, and uh, virtually during our kind of larger scale um, open houses um, is we do uh, what we call model classes. Um, and it's just for prospective students and their families. And it's an opportunity for uh, them to be introduced to, you know, one or a couple of our faculty mem members and them teaching on a particular subject um, and kind of getting what the experience would be like. Um, we have previously allowed students to sit in on prospective or admitted students to sit in on actual classes, but because our classes are so small um, and there really is a, uh, a culture that is developed over the semester or over the year, sometimes having someone come into that class can be disruptive. So um, we try to provide the model classes to kind of give that sense, you know, of what it's like to be in, you know, a classroom setting at Sarah Lawrence. Now, the, the, the first year seminar has conference work. Correct. Now, every, and the other courses they take, do they have conference work too, or do they not have conference work? They anymore? do, correct. So most courses at Sarah Lawrence will have some kind of conference work um, attachment to it. Now, our courses in the performing arts might be a little different and our visual arts, so again, might not be a traditional paper. Uh, our dancers, you know, they're focusing on their craft, so they're doing a performance or something like that. But there's some kind of work that is done, that is worked on over the semester, because uh, it's not just about the end product, but the process of writing and rewriting or working and reworking a project. Um, that our students engage in. And again, doing that in conjunction with the faculty that they're taking the course with. 
How would this that work in a subject like mathematics? So students, you know, again, the, the projects can really vary um, on what they're doing. Um, and so it could be um, a paper in addition to a student working on, uh, you know, a particular uh, project in a very innovative way. Um, our like student, our students in our science courses are doing poster sessions from research that they've done. So very traditional research projects um, that our students, you know, have done in various subject areas. Also, or students who are just really creative. I've heard of students, you know, in a math course, uh, combining an interest in music um, and thinking about how math and music are connected. Um, and, you know, producing a project that represents those interests. Um, so there's really, a, there is no kind of end to what our students can do um, in working on their, their conference projects and papers. Does the, do the faculty know each other well enough to help someone, let's say, plan out a curriculum over four years? Very much so. And there are some guidelines in terms of what courses, so the college, um, as a liberal arts college, we kind of have four what I call umbrella areas. So the creative and performing arts, natural sciences and mathematics, social sciences and history, and then the humanities. We want our students by the time they're prepared to graduate to have taken classes in at least three out of four of those areas. So we're not pinpointing specific courses that they need to take, but more the general, these are the things that you should be um, thinking about or you should be focusing on so that you get a well-rounded liberal arts education. Every student that graduates from Sarah Lawrence graduates with a bachelor's of arts in liberal arts. So we want them to get that well-rounded education while they are focusing on their particular interest. And then there's some other kind of credit guidelines and things like that. Um, but again, it's never a case where we're saying you have to take this course to do this, you know, to, to get this degree. Um, like you said, when we were speaking earlier, other than prerequisite courses, um, it's really about the students utilizing the curriculum that's offered to really shape their own education. Given what you just said, how do you look at prospective students? Because I could imagine um, thinking, okay, this person's very heavy in humanities and performing arts, and they avoided every science course. They, they took as little science as they could or as little math as they could. And then you have people who have done very well in everything. And there's just something they like about creating their own education. How do you evaluate people then? Because I imagine you get those extremes. We do. We get all those extremes, everything in between. Um, it's really about looking at, you know, the student as a whole and, you know, the, the buzzword very holistically um, and what do they bring to the campus? Um, and they And are they the kind of student that um, is looking to really direct their education, looking to explore, you know, they might know I want to study, you know, literature, this is what I want to do, uh, but are open to their faculty mentor, the faculty they're taking classes with, encouraging them to try new things. Are they, they open to, uh, you know, utilizing um, their successes, but also their failures to help them direct, you know, further direct their education. Um, are these students who have challenged themselves in a variety of different ways and are um, open to new challenges? Um, so it's not so much just about, you know, what they're, they've studied, but how have they engaged with the um, academic, with, with their academics and the, and the curriculum that's offered to them? you know, in their high school um, and how are they looking to engage in their college curriculum? You, um, and usually, oh, go ahead. Do you look at rigor differently than say a, a liberal arts college that turns away 95% of the applicants? I mean, we definitely look at rigor because, you know, the kind of student that uh, attends Sarah Lawrence typically is someone who has engaged with a rigorous curriculum in high school. Um, because we're not a place where, you know, there is handholding. It's really about the student, uh, you know, kind of stepping up um, and not being afraid, you know, to engage with faculty um, 
in a way that is more peer-like. Um, and so students who have taken AP courses and have been in, in classroom settings where um, discussion-based curriculum or discussion-based classes is kind of what, what um, uh, the, the format. Um, students in IB curriculums who have done the extended essay, you know, understand engaging, you know, in, um, in research um, and study and producing, you know, um, in-depth work like that. So students who have had the opportunity to do that typically are, are successful um, at Sarah Lawrence. And so, although we have students who have not engaged in that curriculum, um, that kind of curriculum, but are successful at Sarah Lawrence as well. And so we utilize our application process um, for students to, or I should say, we kind of, we offer an application process that allows students to um, introduce themselves to us the way that they want to. Um, so of course, things like the high school transcript and, you know, um, their essays and things like that, um, the common app essay, you know, we're going to, we're going to look at that, but we also have a, additional essays that we ask students to submit and how do they engage with those? How do they talk about themselves, their interest? Uh, with those essays. We offer optional interviews, um, which are done with current students. Um, so it's an opportunity for them to learn more about the college um, from the student perspective, but also tell more, tell us more about them outside of what's on their application. Uh, we're test optional and have been uh, for quite some time, well before uh, the pandemic. Um, and so the students who submit scores are typically the students that want us to, to, to consider them as a part of the process and the students who don't, um, that's fine. You know, we, we will utilize what we have and what they have shared with us um, to, to make a decision on whether or not we feel this student um, will be successful and if this is the kind of education that they're looking for. It sounds like you'd spend more, your office would spend more time reading an application than they would at a mid-sized school. Correct. Or a very large school. Mm -hmm. because you're looking for reasons to admit you're looking right. for things that are interesting about someone right and often if there's something that's interesting but unique do you have to ask the prospect the applicant about that like so if they I wrote a music composition or they did some science pro you know wrote code for a app or something like that do you have to ask them about that I've definitely had um, situations where I've reached out to an applicant because I read something in their application, but I wanted more information. And then I say, hey, can you tell me a little bit you know, more about this or that? But I find that our students, our applicants are typically very um, open with sharing those kinds of things because they think they recognize that those are the kinds of students that are at Sarah Lawrence. They're doing those kinds of things. Uh, and they're so they're proud of that. So they share that, you know, with us, their high school counselor, their uh, teachers are sharing those kind of unique things um, that they've done, you know, in high school. Um, they're sharing it with us in some way, whether it's through an essay, their extracurricular involvement, whatever it might be. Would you advise a prospective student to, t to be thoughtful as to the teacher they choose is to choose to write the recommendation? Very much so. Other usually, people might do it. Usually, I tell students, you know, first off, you want to ensure that the the person or the people that are writing a recommendation can write a positive recommendation, um, but also someone who can speak to your growth. You know, as a student, uh, we're not necessarily just looking for the teacher uh, you to sub have a teacher rec submitted from the class that you got an, an A in. We want to learn about your growth as a student and kind of how you handle challenges or setbacks um, or how you have um, uh, pursued your education, you know, um, and been an independent thinker, independent learner. Um, so students, um, you know, sometimes feel that they should just, you know, send the the, the um, have a letter sent from the teacher that they've done the best, the class that they've done the best in, but that isn't necessarily the teacher that can speak the most to your skills and abilities and you as an individual. Um, so I, you know, often tell students, think about those teachers that know you well um, and know your experiences. You're, it sounds like Sarah Lawrence will attract a lot of unique individuals. Now, often unique individuals, some get along with people well, and they could be in a group. Others, they deliberately don't want to be in a group. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, how do you bond all these people to keep the cl a class together until they I, earn their degrees? Sure. I think it really starts, you know, with that first year studies course. You know, they've all kind of selected, you know, that course as one of their interests and, and it's a, a topic that, you know, they're all interested in and, and they're meeting in a small seminar class so they get to know each other. And they're also, you know, um, uh, adjusting to be being in college, you know, and, and the majority of our students live on campus. So um, they're not only seeing each other in the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. Um, but I also think our um, student affairs office does a really great job of creating spaces for students to connect, you know, outside of the classroom. Um, and so there are a number of things that happen uh, during orientation um, to kind of help bond students, but throughout their time at the campus uh, to really build those connections. Um, and I think you, as you and I were speaking, you know, earlier, um, the arts is a big part of that for our campus. Um, there's always some kind of performance or something going on. Um, uh, a few years ago, our president, uh, Crystal Collins Judge, created a speaker series, which has a theme, a different theme every year. Um, and so that, you know, pulls not only our students together, but the full campus. And because we are a small, close-knit, you know, community, um, you know, our students, you know, know us in the admissions office, you know, not, you know, um, they they continue to, to you know, stay connected with us um, well beyond their, um, you know, application process. They know the staff, you know, in student affairs. And so it's not just the faculty that they're taking classes with from day to day. Um, they really connect with the staff on the campus as well. So it is, we really do try to create a space for community and for engagement um, in an education that is very individualized. Um, and so finding that, you know, how do we strike that that balance, um, I think is the work um, that uh, a lot of our staff are focused on doing. Are, do clubs and organizations often come and go with student interests given the students are, are gonna be unique every year? I think with, you know, any campus there, there may be some that, you know, may come and go, but our student affairs staff has worked really hard to, uh, what we were finding is that we were, there were several variations of different clubs or organizations. So there might be a common theme, but there might be something a little bit different about that club or organization that um, uh, various students wanted to, you know, create something else. And so they they try to work to pull those groups together so that there are sustainable clubs and organizations that you see, you know, that a student can be involved with for their four years, you know, at the college. Because we used to have like over 100 clubs and organizations. And for our campus, you know, a 14, 13, 1400, that's a lot. Um, and so they've, they've, they've you know, um, kind of pared that down by, again, connecting the students running these various different clubs um, and saying, you know, you have a similar interest. Maybe there's a way you can work together to, you know, meet all of, you know, both of your needs. Um, and so that has seen, we've seen, you know, success, you know, with that over the last few years. Um, and there are def definitely clubs that, you know, have, were here when I started 13 years ago that continue to exist. Um, so not only, you know, in the arts and, and creative and performing arts, but other areas as well. Um, we have really strong uh, student identity groups um, that have been a part of the campus well before I, I joined um, because our students are very much um, involved in social justice and, and things like that. So and a lot of those uh, organizations often have that as a part of their, the work that they do. So there are definitely things that I think tie all of our students together in some way. Now, um, you're close to New York. Um, how does the, how does the college help the students to get to know New York City? Because the majority of your students don't come from New York. Correct. So we really, um, utilize New York as an extension of our, um, campus. Uh, so faculty are often taking students into um, the city for various reasons. So whether it's going to see a Broadway show or going to tour a particular 
um, business or organization. Uh, certainly internships. Um, our Career Services Office works really hard to connect students to the various opportunities, you know, available um, in New York City. Um, and they've cultivated relationships that they've had, you know, for for years with various employers uh, so that our students can get that experience um, working, you know, in, you know, almost every type of business represented, you know, in New York City and, and having that as a resource, I think for a lot of a lot of students is a draw. Um, some students, you know, they come to Sarah Lawrence because we are so close to New York. Other students really have no interest. You know, they may go in once a semester to the city or once a year, um, but there is a um, relationship there that students can take advantage of for sure. And then of course there's students that go in themselves, you know, for entertainment purposes, or they know other students at other colleges, uh, but there's definitely um, a relationship there. Now, um, someone is thinking about Sarah Lawrence. They're in high school now. What should they, because it's unique in, in, in so many ways compared to even other liberal arts colleges, what should a student do when they visit, other than obviously take a tour and listen in on an information session? Sure. Um, well, I think the information session, doing the information session prior to the tour um, is really key uh, because we do involve current students in the information session. Um, so you really get to learn from their experience and it kind of helps to um, lay out the structure of the education because we try to focus on the academic experience um, in the, the information session. The tour, you'll get more of a sense of the uh, campus life and all of that. Uh, you'll get some of the academics as well. You'll get to see a classroom, things like that. But the information session which is almost like a, a, a panel, a student panel is, is set up that way. Um, but we also encourage, we actually have on our website a page called, um, uh, oh gosh, blanking again. <laughs> um, it's an opportunity for students to connect with current students. So we have profiles uh, listed on, um, which you can find off of our student profiles, which you can find off of our um, main admissions website. Will students maintain a dialogue with prospective mm -hmm. students, like schools have student ambassador programs? Exactly. And these are our student ambassadors. So they're, and their profiles are all listed. They can see what they're studying, their academic interests, where they're from, their extracurricular involvement, and they can email the students and build that, like you said, kind of rapport and have those conversations about their experience and connect specifically with someone who's doing this similar kinds of things that they're interested in doing. So that's a great way, you know, to get to know uh, the campus a, a bit better and get to know the, the students a bit better. And you can contact as, you know, as many students, you know, as you like. Um, but it really is a great way um, to get to know us. We also offer optional interviews, which are also done with students. Um, and so that, you know, information becomes a part of the application process. So for someone who has uh, applied, um, this is an option for them, but it's a way for them to, again, engage with a student, learn more about the student experience, and then share more about their interest in the college um, and why they feel that it would be um, a, a place that they would be successful. Um, so interviewing is a, another great option. Um, and when students are visiting, families are visiting, we always have admission staff available so they can come and chat with us, you know, before or after their tour. Um, if they have any specific questions, we've connected students with faculty, you know, so if they have, you know, particular interests or, or um, academic interests and they would like to speak with a faculty member, member, we can make that outreach and connect them with someone in that particular discipline so that they can learn, you know, a bit more about um, and more in detail about, you know, that academic structure. Now, now some, now someone's accepted admission they've been, and they're trying to decide between Sarah Lawrence and one other school um can they come to campus stay stay with a student overnight get to know the community a little better to make the decision we actually no longer offer overnight visits um we used to in in the past but for various reasons um decided to and it's probably been about five or six years now um okay. that we haven't 
But oftentimes um, students know other Sarah Lawrence students and so they come on their own um, and stay overnight, which is fine. We just don't, um, we don't uh, um, offer them through the admissions office. One thing that's interesting is the, there's a lot of high profile alumni for a fairly mm -hmm. small school. And obviously you have a lot of recent graduates just earning their degrees, getting started. Does the college leverage the alumni base? to help recruit new students, to help, uh, you know, attract new pro develop new programs, invite alumni to come back to speak, things like that. Very much so. Our career services office, especially. So not only, you know, do students have the opportunities to take advantage of internships in the city, a lot of times it's, um, they're with alums, with Sarah Lawrence alums at our students, because we have a lot of alums that are in the New York area, New York City area. And, um, but also, the Career Services Office offers panels um, and opportunities for alums and students to connect, current students to connect through various panels and workshops and things like that. So we definitely are tapped into our alumni base. Um, and in admissions, we actually um, um, are kind of revamping, further developing a program that we've been doing the last few years where we have recent alums who worked in our office as ambassadors who are actually reading applications. Um, and so we're looking to um, actually develop that program a bit further where we can connect recent alums with prospective or admitted students um, to talk about their experience, you know, um, at Sarah Lawrence and beyond. Um, so we're certainly, you know, wanting to engage the, the um, alum in different ways throughout the admissions process as well. Last question. Everybody who, who's going through this school is so different in their interests and maybe in viewpoints as well. Um, when you're looking at prospective students, who, who do you think would succeed in that environment versus a school where there might be activities that involve large numbers of students or that they kind of dominate, they kind of drive the social aspects of the school? Or, you know, there's a school with so many groups, a very big university might have so many groups. What do you, who do you think, who would succeed at Sarah Lawrence that maybe wouldn't succeed at another school? I think, you know, it's interesting because we do have students from all different walks of life with all different kinds of experiences, but there, there are things that really connect them. Um, and the main thing is the passion for education. Um, and so I think students recognize that in each other and that that is really a part of what connects, you know, one of the reasons that that they are connected to the college, they're connected to each other. Um, and even though it is a very individualized curriculum, it is a very close knit community. Um, and like I said, it really starts with that passion for education at the heart of it. Um, so students who are successful, you know, are, are those students who are just they their their focus is learning. It isn't so much about what they're learning, um, but the op opportunity to learn um, and to engage in conversation with um, the material that they are learning. So, having you know that seminar classroom experience where you may have a different opinion than someone else, you know, in your classroom, but being able to engage in that conversation is what excites you um, and learning from others and their experiences. Um, and so for a lot of our students, you know, that's what draws them here. That's what keeps them, you know, um, on the campus. Um, and that same kind of um, experience happens outside of the classroom as well. Um, and students engaging in um, similar interests. And even though they, there, there might be a little bit of a, um, uh, a little bit of a difference in what they're studying. They're still, you know, connected. We have students who are studying dance. We have students who are studying math. We have students who are studying science or film. So there's still that connection there. They might be a little bit of a different direction that they're going. One, like we were saying before, one person might be studying film, but they're interested in science fiction. Another student might be studying film and they're interested in a different area but that film interest still pulls them to you know kind of draws them together and again it's not only just about the 
what they're doing in the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well, and kind of how those interests bleed into uh, those interests outside of the classroom. So I think students who are successful are, um, you know, driven, they're self-directed, they're interested in engaging, you know, not everyone is going to be, you know, the most vocal in the classroom. We do have quiet students, you know, that are on our campus, um, but they are um, also, you know, very critical thinkers and creative thinkers and want to engage with people um, in, in various different ways. Well, it sounds like with great power comes great responsibility. That's right. Jennifer, this this ended perfectly. Thank you very much for Oh, for thank you. Time, no, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for your time and look forward to seeing the post. <laughs>